Now we're uh, moving to our plenary is uh, with our first speaker is a member of the Yazidi Survivor Network. We are Zina Haji Youssef. Zina is a Yazidi activist and a member of Yazda Yazidi Survivor Network, advocating for the rights of survivors and the Yazidi and other minorities. Zina was enslaved by Daesh when she was 18 years old. And when she was enslaved by Daesh fighters, it was in her captivity for three years. Before a genocide began, Zina was a student and ambitious to become a pharmacist and one day manage her own pharmacy. And now we are uh, introducing her in with, with other, our speaker, Lynn. Where other additional information about Zina, uh, she is the Yazidi activist, we said, and when she was 17 years old, she was kind of before captured by ISIS, she was in her dream of becoming a biology teacher in her small town called the Guri in Northern Iraq. Zina's father is still missing and we all, or commemorating this genocide of the Yazidi community, including missing father of Zina. We want to welcome Zina into this panel. And Len Zovirian, co-founder and manager. Len is a business and a peace builder. She is the managing director of Zovirian Partnership when she is co-founded with her father in 2013 a family-owned social investment platform. A Zovirian partnership is also home to a public office as a peace building platform. The team established in 2015 with Yazda organization as its first pro bono client and partner. Len is also a columnist in Lebanon-based Pan regional newspaper, Al Nahar is the name of it and a Merits Director of the Nexus Global. Len has been with us in, in many of these uh, memorials and, and as is mentioned here since 2015 and perhaps before that. And she has been with us in every step of the way. Len is a huge part of organizing this event and is participating in this plenary with Zina. Uh, well, I want to welcome both of you to uh, join us and take it from here. My name is Linza Vigian, and I am very privileged today to have with me human rights activist and Yazda Yezidi Survivor Network member, Zina Hadji. Thank you very much, Zina, for being with us on this very pertinent and I know very personal day. أود أن أشكركم جميعا وأشكر السيدة لين لدعوة المشاركة في هذه المؤتمر بصفة أحد أعداء الشبكة الناجيات الإيزيديات التي أسستها يزدا لدفاع عن الحقوق الناجيات الإيزيديات والأقاليات الأخرى مسبقا أود أن أشكركم جميعا على حسن الاستماع وأتأمل أن تكون وجهات ندري متواضعة في هذا الحوار ذات التأثير على كل من يسمعنا اليوم وكل من سمع زميلات أعداء الشبكة الناجيات الإيزيديات قبلي البارحة واليوم ومن يسمعنا في المستقبل لعلكم بحسن الاستماع هذا تساعدونا على فعل التغير الإيجابي في قضيتنا Thank you, my dear. Zina and I have structured this plenary for you today as a conversation between us that brings together personal and technical reflections and considerations to ensure that plans for reconstruction, especially housing, are designed and activated in conclusion and utmost dignity. 
Lina will be speaking in the Arabic language and I will be giving my remarks in English. I would like to begin by asking my sister Zina a very personal question. Who is the woman, Zina Hadji, in front of us today on this August 3rd, 2021? <laughs> تعيش فيها بكرامة وبحرية أنا تلك الفتاة التي في لحدات فقط لحدات قتلت طفولتها وكل أحلامها التي ما زالت تسعى إلى أن تحققها ولكن بأمل ضعيف طفولتي التي لم أعيشها بحريتي وبرغبتي بسبب أسر داعش لي ومن بعدها أصبحت ناجية من أفشع الجرائم في عالم الإنسانية أنا تلك المرأة التي كبرت في العام الواحد ألف عام تلك المرأة التي أصبحت تسمى ناجية اليوم لأنها بقوتها وأسرارها تمكنت من الهروب من التنديم الداعش الأرهابي والعودة إلى أهلها ومجتمعها وديانتها تلك المرأة التي تسعى إلى تحقيق العدالة تلك المرأة التي تستطيع الوقوف بوجه الظالمين ومواجهتهم ومحاسبتهم تلك المرأة التي تستطيع اليوم بينكم جميعا بعلى الصوت إن تقول لا وألف لا لأي ظلم أو اضطهاد النساء من جميع المكونات ولكن بالأخص الأيزيديات تلك المرأة التي تحاول بكافة الوسائل الدفاع عن المظلومين وخاصة النساء والفتيات اللواتي تعرضنا إلى انتهاكات الجسدية الجنسية النفسية والإنسانية تلك المرأة التي تقف مع كثير من النساء القويات أمثالها للمطالب بالحق التي أصبحت عدو في شبكة الناجيات الأيزيديات التي فيها نساء من أشجع وأعدم النساء في العراق وربما في العالم الله يحفظك أخت زينة thank you for these very courageous words I personally know how incredibly strong, deeply human, and truly committed the Yazda Yazidi Survivors Network members are. You are all an integral engine that is powering advocacy for the Yazidi cause. And I would really like to take this moment to express my deepest condolences to you on this August 3rd. We we'll also thank you all, all YSN members, for your trust in me over the last couple of years, and especially over the last few weeks, working hand in hand together to define and present in your own words the key messages you wish to make loud and clear to the world. Zina, let's talk about Shingal. Let's talk about Sinjar. Where are you from in Shingal? I'm from the city of the city of the city of Sinjar. That's the city of 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 the 
والذي كنت أمتلك حياة بسيطة جميلة مريحة فيها كنت أعيش فيها حياة هادئة مع عائلتي وأصدقائي إلى 3-8-2014 ذلك المجمع الذي كنت أمتلك بيتا فيها وكنت أعيش حياة ذات الكرامة بين أهلي في ذلك البيت تلك القرية التي كانت ذات بيوت دينية ولكنها كانت مليئة بالحب ذلك المجمع الذي كنت أمتلك مدرسة أتعلم فيها حيث كنت طالبة في السف الثالث متوسطة ذات الأحلام وأهداف الكبيرة وأنا في عمر السابع عشرة كنت ذات شغف الكبير لتخطيط مستقبلي في أن أصبح معلمة لمادة الأحياء في أن أتمكن من العيشة حياة بسيطة ومريحة بجهدي وتعبي بأن أعيل عائلتي وأساندهم في المستقبل تلك القرية التي جميع أفراد كانوا بمثابة أهلي حيث جميع الأفراد قريتي كانوا كالأهل مع بعضهم البعض تلك القرية التي أهلها كانوا يفرحون ويحزنون معا تلك القرية التي وقعت فيها بين يدين العناصر التنديم الداعش الذي وقع بآلاف من مجتمعي وأهلي وناسي تلك القرية الذي بتيت كثير من الأحلام فيها ولكنها نفس القرية التي دفنت تلك الأحلام فيها تلك القرية التي وقعت فيها بإيدين العناصر التنديم الداعش الأرهابي الذي وقع بآلاف من مجتمعي وأهلي وناسي وأصبحنا لأناس لا يعرفون معنى الإنسانية لأناس ليس لهم دمير تلك القرية التي فقدت بيتي وأبي وتشتتت عائلتي فيها بسبب هجوم الداعش الأرهابي عليهم في 3-8-2014 very much for this very personal and extremely difficult recollection. I want to say, as I've always told you and the YSN members, that I truly applaud your courage to be with us at this commemorative event on a day that I know is that much more difficult to talk about what needs to be talked about. I would like to take a moment to contextualize this northern town where Zina is from and to appreciate that Shingal is an area of over 2,900 square kilometers with very different dynamics and challenges in the north versus the south. While the north was less hit by the displacement efforts of genocide, the populations of the south have faced displacement and expulsion by Daesh and fled to the North seeking refuge. As such, the North continues to absorb many complexities of long-term displacement, even though it might have been less hit by the military campaigns, pillaging campaigns of Daesh. Nina, we are today seven years into a genocide. We are not here to commemorate a genocide that started and ended seven years ago. We are today seven years in, and this genocide feels like it sees no end. Until today, there is no comprehensive socioeconomic development plan and strategy that has been proposed meaningfully for Shingal. Housing is still viewed 
as building temporary shelters. Let us not begin to talk once again about the IDP camps in which the majority of our displaced and traumatized community members live. Today, the majority of these temporary shelter projects are private housing projects, and they are being managed by a handful of small NGOs with some private funding. What that teaches us is that housing is yet to become a well-studied, inclusive, and enabling strategy. That is the strategy that it does absolutely need to become. It is also important to recognize that a house and a home are simply not the same thing. Dina, please, would you tell us what does home mean to you? والدافئ لا أعرف كيف أوصفه هو ذلك المكان الذي كنت مجتمعا مع جميع أفراد عائلتي حيث كلما رأيت أمي وأبي وجميع أخوتي مجتمعين حولي كنت أشعر بالحب والحنان والراحة البيت هو العائلة البيت هو وجود أبي هو السند والأمان اللدان فقدتهما بفقدان أبي 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 الذي لا يتكرر في الحياة أبي الذي لا يتكرر في الحياة البيت هو ليس بمكان وإنما كل أحد عشت فيها مع أهلي وخاصة أبي البيت هو الذكريات أنا وأخواتي كنت أمتلك بيتا ولكن الآن لا أمتلك أي بيتا طالما أبي مفقود تلك البيوت الطينية البسيطة التي ذكرتها قبل قليل باتت أن تكون حلما باتت تكون حلما لنا لأنه في حاضرنا هذا ليس لنا حتى قابل للعيشة أنا ومئات الآلاف الإيزيدين الآن نعيش في, الم... في الكردستان عراق في المخيمات النازعين وعلى مدار السبع سنوات كل سنة ونعيش مأساة جديدة نحن لا نعرف أين وكيف ومتى سوف تنتهي قصتنا مع المعاناة التي نعيشها في المخيمات والتي هي دليل على استمرارية الإبادة الجماعية التي حلت علينا في 3-8-2014 نحن الآن في حال فوضي لا نستطيع العودة إلى مناطقنا في ذل الظروف الراهنة وبقائنا في هذه المخيمات التي نحترق سيفا ونموت بردا ونموت بردا نحترق سيفا ونموت بردا في الشتاء ليس بالحل الدائم ومناسب لنا سيدتي لين كيف ممكن إن يكون لي بيتا وأنا على مدار السنوات أعيش في أحد هذه المخيمات السنية أخت زينة What a difficult question Zina is asking us today. How can she have a home when she has been living a life of encampment for all these years? 
years after living years in captivity. It is not going to be enough to just provide housing for the Yazidi community. We need to enable homes and a life of dignity. It is because we cannot bring back what the community has lost that we, the national and international community, we have such an important responsibility to get these homes right. Until today, housing projects have not included the displaced, have not included the survivors of genocide. The temporary and permanent houses that the Yezidi will be asked to live in once construction is over in Sinjar do not include their voices, their needs, their identity, their unique ways of life their socio-cultural and religious fabric that makes them community. I have to tell all stakeholders today, and members of the international community and members of the national governments present with us, that is not the right ask. That is not what will enable homes or guarantee community and dignity. Today, families that tried their best to return to Shingad, even with nothing, are being re-displaced back into internal displacement camps. Nor is it homes for a sustainable future. Zina, Zina Ukhti, I understand that Yazidi families have very specific needs to make Shingal home once again. Tell me, what would motivate you to move back? إلى أكثر من ثمانين مقبرة جماعية العمل على تلك المقابر ودفن أهلنا وحبتنا وناسنا توفير الأمن والأمان توفير الخدمات المعيشية التي نستحقها كباقي البشر يؤسفني القول إلى الآن لا شيء إيجابي يدفعني إلى يدفعني إلى سنجار بكل صراحة نحن بحاجة للثقة مرة أخرى مرة أخرى والثقة تحتاج إلى فعل وجهد حقيقي من جهات ذات العلاقة من الحكومة العراقية والأقليم ومن جم ومن مجتمع الدولي أيضاً كي نستطيع العودة إلى مناطقنا في دل الظروف الراهنة في دل هذه الصراعات السياسية والعسكرية التي تهدد أمن سنجار لا أستطيع أن أتأمن على مستقبلي في سنجار إذا لم نكن إلى إذا لم تكن هناك هناك دمان إن إن كل ما حصل لي ولمجتمعي من أبشع الجرائم سوف لن تتكرر في المستقبل سوف سوف لن يكون لي مستقبل في سنجار إذا لم أكن أستطيع اليوم العيشة بكرامة في سنجار فذلك لا يساعدني على تأمين على مستقبل في سنجا كم يؤسفني إن أشعر وإن أقول هذا الكلام لكنها الحقيقة التي أحس بها سيدتي سيدتي لين أريد أن أفهم ما الذي يتطلب للشنقال لتكون البيت الآمن لأبنائها 
ما هي الخطوة التالية؟ ما ما هي الخطوة التالية التي يجب اعتمادها لكي نعمل مع الحكومة العراقية والمجتمع الدولي لإعادة الحياة إلى شنغال كما أوصى كما أوصى أمس دولة الرئيس مصطفى الكاظمي And thank you for this real honesty check. Until mass graves are exhumed and the dead are honored, villages will remain open cemeteries. Until security is once and for all addressed and armed forces, including Daesh, will continue to violate and exploit this land. Until community is empowered to become part of the policy, part of the strategy, and hand in hand in implementation journeys, we will only be able to build a couple of housing projects. But that will not take us very far. So let us talk about the different pieces of this complex puzzle. Reconstruction is a very heavy, significant, and multifaceted plan of action. Shindal will need to be broken down into zones, demarcated by both topology, geography, socioeconomy, and community. Every area, every zone will need to be thought about as its own master plan, building upon the strengths of its local inhabitants, economic potential, and also while managing and mitigating risks and challenges related to connectivity and mobility, security, and feasibility. Every zone master plan will need to be defined and designed with each respective community at the decision-making table. A master plan will need to include community-led housing designs, but also integrate the key services and spaces for community assets. We've heard about many of those services and needs over the last two days. And let us not forget the essentiality of the religious and cultural sites that have been destroyed as a critical part of the genocide strategy perpetrated by Daesh. Without those assets, we cannot be asking families to return to build back a sustainable future. But it takes more than that because this is a community that is deeply vulnerable, that has been held in camps for much too long. They don't just need basic services the Yazidi need to be given the services and the enablement to achieve and to thrive, to be able to become productive communities once again, to be able to give back to themselves so that they may also give back to Iraq and the Kurdistan region. All of that needs time. If we want to begin today, with the right conversations and the right initial policy actions, with the support of multiple key stakeholders, including, but not limited to, the various ministries, Ministry of Displacement and Immigration, Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, the municipalities, and all of the other quasi-government and government agencies that need to be part of this big picture. If we were today to come together, let us really appreciate that this is not a quick fix. The solution of enabling housing for 355,000 people, Yazidis, who are still displaced, I hate to say it, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, members, dear friends of the Yazidi community, but that is going to take many years if we begin right today. 
it's going to require significant expertise, serious long-term funding, and tremendous political and goodwill from everyone. And we will only be able to work at the pace of the weakest link. So every single piece of the puzzle needs to be right, needs to be righteous, it needs to be strong. To bring Shingal back to life, we all need to become one team. Zina, Ukhti, this is not the last time we will be having this important conversation together. Thank you, my dear, for being so honest today, for challenging all of us to recognize that words without actions can no longer suffice. As I said last year, at the sixth annual commemoration of the Yazidi genocide, your genocide is our genocide. And on this seventh annual commemoration, I hope that today and yesterday, we have made it clear that Shingal is all of our responsibility. Thank you for this important conversation. Hyder, my brother, this floor is yours. Thank you very much, Lent. Thank you both for this plenary. It's, it's kind of depressing what everything that Zina is reminding us of. It's, it's just really bringing us back to day one of the genocide when I was in Texas and didn't want to wake up. I thought it was just a, I thought it was a nightmare, a very bad one. So Zina, I think your message is resonating with thousands of Yazidi survivors, direct and indirect victims of this genocide. Thank you both for this uh, remarkably incredibly important messages and conversation.